Thank you very much, Esther. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for the initiative. I really like and appreciate this country visits. We had organized similar things in the Joint Action IPAC, and it's always very interesting to see how other countries are doing or trying to implement innovation into their healthcare systems. It would, of course, be nicer to have face-to-face -face meetings, but okay, by this it will also go. So I'm Mark van der Bulk, I'm the head of the Cancer Center of Sensano, and we are involved in numerous projects uh, along personalized medicine. And maybe the next slide, uh, it has taken, do I move? Uh, okay. It has taken some time before Belgium has really endorsed uh, participating in the One Million Genome. We were present from the beginning as an observer, but only last year, our government decided to sign the declaration. Since then, we've launched some activities and we had an info session where uh, both the European Commission and the B1MG, Serena, was there to present a little bit the initiatives to a large audience. We invited all the people that we knew who could be related to these activities. And uh, we launched then a survey uh, to demand, uh, to express interest in participating in the mirror group, because one of the ideas is that each country creates a mirror group to reflect on what is going on in the One Million Genome projects. And by now we have established the, uh, the mirror group. And I must say there is a similar activity going on at the Superior Health Council for some time already on genomics. I'm not going to in detail, but we're trying now to align. So the next slide, and you see that uh, we have now um, the mirror group established with representatives for a number of topics and the secretariat of the group is a joint uh, responsibility of people from health, which I uh, uh, represent, and some people from research, uh, Kathleen Dont and Sophie Peterbrook, uh, because uh, the initiative that here is the One Million Genome is really trying to integrate research and healthcare to the best. Uh, we have um, representatives in our mirror group of both academia, of health professionals, and also from uh, government policy makers. And in total, we have in the, the, the mirror group, I, the, the whole group is about uh, 55 people now, all people dealing with the different aspects of uh, the gen where genomics could be interesting. Uh, to uh, our healthcare system and research. And the next slide, one of the exercises that we now you know, uh, trying are going to launch is, is the previous one, is to map a little bit which activities that are ongoing in Belgium could fit in the, uh, the different aspects that are uh, in the mirror group. So there are quite a number of uh, activities been going on on the ethics and legal side, uh, where we had citizen uh, forum, we had DNA debates online, we had focus groups, so we bring all that together. We established a governance, which is uh, quite new, where we will bring uh, bodies that are already taking care of health aspects, but also on research, uh, and we will try to group them so that we have a new platform of discussion on uh, bringing forward this uh, initiative uh, in Belgium. We have a num numerous group that are involved in clinical data and quality assessment. We have the Commission of Pathology, Clinical Biology, the Colleges of Oncology, Rare Diseases. We have a Commission of Personalized Medicine. We have the accreditation body, BELAC, the EQA, and we will bring them all together. So that is another aspect that is very important for this project. Infrastructure, uh, we have a centralized um, system that is called Health Data that gathers registers that um, document uh, all elements on health in one framework. Uh, we have Elixir, we are a part of the Elixir node. Uh, we have a working group already for some time on the bioinformatics for whole genome sequencing, and we have a data platform for COVID. So there also all these groups should be uh, incorporated. Uh, in the healthcare implementation, uh, we have a project running uh, where we uh, structurally implement non next generation sequencing in oncology, and I will come back on that in the next slide. And of course, we have the genetic centers. We have a health information service that have been running for more than 20 years, and we have very many activities in the Superior Health Council on bringing uh, uh, genomics into the healthcare system. 
And then uh, for the use cases, we are now developing uh, working groups on, on that part. And maybe to just show how we did with the next generation uh, sequencing in oncology on the next slides. Uh, that was a large project um, and it was financed for five years. Uh, yeah, I think. So on the next slide, and there was different activities that have been, um, uh, different action that had to be taken. So on the top left, uh, we created a commission on personalized medicine where we brought together all uh, health professionals that have something to do with next generation sequencing in oncology. So it is pathologists, clinical biologists, geneticists, molecular biologists, bioinformaticians, but also people from the peers uh, organizations, from the health technology assessment, from the cancer register. So they're all sitting in this commission. Uh, the first thing we did was make a guidelines. So there is a common guidelines for the implementation of the next generation sequencing in the healthcare. Uh, we coupled it to the BALAC. So it's, uh, you have to follow, it's an obligation from by BALAC to follow the guidelines. We established an EQA system. And then very important, of course, at a certain moment, you want to get reimbursed for this testing. So there is a link uh, with the, uh, the payers, the, the RISIF INAMI, NIHDI. Um, there was from the start said there should be some central registration. So within the health data uh, co uh, concept, we have a central registration with a link established to the cancer register. We have a national cancer register in Belgium. We discussed in depth uh, with citizens and patients for the ethic and legal aspects. And also we uh, managed to establish networks. There are 10 networks created in Belgium where we try to centralize uh, the approach. This is something that is now up and running. The pilot is ongoing. It's, uh, the idea is to now uh, structurally implement it, uh, but that's the, the work for the coming couple of years. On the next slide, uh, this initiative brings together healthcare and research. Research is basically in Belgium organized bottom up. Uh, so you see there's many different things coming up. Uh, and we now have to see how we will bring uh, research uh, in alignment with things that can be done really in the healthcare system. In the healthcare system, we have a more structured approach where you normally start with an HTA or health service evaluation uh, analysis. Then based on the recommendations that comes from these studies, you create a plan, we call it a roadbook. Uh, and then within the rule book, normally there is a piloting phase to learn uh, what is working, what is not working, what should be changed. And then you go over to the structural implementation. Um, this is something now that is going to be, have to be developed for the whole genome sequencing. Uh, we've done a, a preliminary, I would say, health uh, survey evaluation for the rare diseases. Uh, but now recently on the next slide, uh, there was a, a, let's say a scoping group uh, organized by the King Baldwin Foundation with some recommendations for research. I'm not going to read them. Uh, it's just out. It was out uh, released yesterday or the day before yesterday, but we were going to work on that and see how we can integrate these kind of elements in uh, creating our, let's say, supporting the maturity plan of bringing a uh, whole genome sequencing to the healthcare system in, in Belgium and also facilitate research on this uh, initiative. Uh, the next slide, uh, what we expect from the 1 million genomes initiatives is definitely uh, help us in establishing the general framework and bring it in line uh, with uh, what is going on in the other member states, because indeed uh, genomic um, medicine or precision medicine or precision health can only work if you have enough data. So we have to be able to share and uh, advise on ethics, legal, quality control, quality assurance, which models, how to organize. This is all very interesting. Uh, I think we will need advice in how and, and learn uh, from, for example, the UK example, how to develop this infrastructure. Uh, we will need uh, guidance and agreement on what, for what can we do uh, whole genome sequence? Where is the benefit for the patients uh, in having whole genome sequencing? It would be nice to have some European guidelines uh, on the interpretation, the reporting, to be able to share the data. And then I think one thing that might be, that's something that I haven't really, we, we, we never discussed it, is maybe we should start thinking about common procurement approaches 
and because these infrastructures and tests are very difficult, uh, very expensive. So we might benefit from doing something together. And there are, we are part of now a, a, a pre-commercial procurement project uh, on, on panels for complex uh, profiling of, of tumor DNA. And I think this is, is something that we could also set up for the whole genome sequencing. Okay, this is more or less what I wanted to say and I tried to, to stay in time. <laughs>